Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about contours and arc length in the complex plane. So we have before uh, talked about these functions z of t equals x of t plus i y of t. And now and then that'll range over some value a all the way to b. And this we're going to think now of this as producing a set call it C, which is what we're going to call a contour in the plane. So for instance, we'll have some, here's the complex plane. We have some point at T equals A, and it goes like that or something, all the way to T equals B. And that's a contour in the plane, some sort of set like that. Okay, so now we want to find some really important types of contours. Um, so we're going to call, uh, we're going to talk about uh, what's called a simple closed contour. Okay, a simple closed contour, um, first of all, it, it uh, does not cross itself. So that is, you can't have a, a, complex, a contour in the curve do one of these. Okay. Uh, so we don't want that kind of uh, a kind of curve like that. Another thing is uh, we don't want we want this to happen. We want z of a to equal z of b. So this would seem to contradict uh, what we're talking about up, uh, up above here. But we, we, we when we talk about crossing, we mean it actually. Oops. There I go again. Um, we're talking about this, uh, we want a curve now that looks like this, where it doesn't cross itself, but it does meet back up with itself. So a curve like this. So you have a point there, z of a, and it leaves z of a like this, then eventually it comes around like that at z of b. Okay, finally, we have another uh, kind of a modifying uh, thing. We want it to be positively oriented. And that means it goes around counterclockwise. Okay, so the, what, what I drew here actually is not a positively oriented curve because it's, it's going around the curve clockwise. So what we want is something like this. Um, we want a, a curve that goes like this. We have z of a, and it's going around in a counterclockwise fashion. And then z of b ends at the same point. And that's what we're going to call a simple closed contour. And again, that's a, the, the modifier there is that it's positively oriented. Uh, and we also want it to be, uh, of course, continuous. We want it to be connected. We don't want any jumps. Uh, it can't be a broken line. Uh, but that's, that's sort of obvious that we would want that to be true. Okay, and then, of course, uh, another thing we may want uh, is it to be differentiable. Okay, so I would call these two modifiers a positively oriented uh, contour, simple closed contour, and a differentiable uh, contour. Those are extra, uh, so I would call these two um, extra conditions. But for our purposes, uh, most of the curves we talk about will be positively oriented and differentiable. Uh, in order for us to ha have them be useful to us for what we're going to be doing in the complex plane with them. Okay, so uh, so we can give some examples real quick of, of this sort of thing. So of course our, our classic example is e to the i um, t is equal to z of t. Uh, and then we're going to take it, always included with the function that generates the contour is a range at which it goes over. Uh, and for this, this is uh, exactly a, uh, this is a simple closed contour that is positively oriented and differentiable. Okay, 
And this is the one we've seen before. And it goes like that. Okay. All right. Now, of course, we can talk about another one, e to the i um, negative i t. Uh, so this is a simple closed contour, positively oriented, and also uh, differentiable. Okay. Now this one is a simple closed contour, but uh, negatively oriented uh, because it's going around the circle. Oops. It's, uh, it's going around the circle this way. So that would be negatively oriented. Finally, uh, we'll talk about another one. So again, that, that also includes this. What about e to the 2i um, t uh, for t between 0 and 2 pi? This is not a uh, simple, cl simple closed contour because that it crosses itself. And of course we see that what's happening is that over this interval 0 to 2 pi we're going around the circle twice. We go to here at t equals pi and then we go around again twice for t equals 2 pi. All right, and because it, it has a, a, a it crosses itself, it actually overlaps over itself. It is not a simple closed contour. All right, so another last thing we're going to talk about briefly is that of arc length. of a contour. And if the contour is generated by z of t, we can write that as x of t plus i y of t. Uh, and we have some a to b range that we're talking about over. The arc length of c, so that generates some uh, curve in the complex plane. Uh, and there's our t equals a, and there's our t equals b. Uh, then we want to find a way to measure the arc length, and there's a standard uh, um, sort of a calc uh, what we call calc 3 uh, definition of arc length, which is fairly straightforward. It's simply going to be um, the length is going to be equal to integral from A to B of the complex modulus of the derivative. Of, uh, so uh, again, we're, we're uh, uh, requiring that this is differentiable. And then we put dt there. Okay, so um, for instance, let's talk about a particular example real quick. Um, I'm going to talk about the contour uh, uh, that's given by z of t is equal to t plus i a of t, where a is some, um, we'll just say it's equal to, it's just some uh, number, I'll say it's equal to 2, just for, uh, just for kicks. All right, so we're going to go from 0 all the way to 1. Okay, so what does this look like in the complex plane? So it looks, of course, sort of like... Um, so that'll be t is equal to 1, and we see it goes up like this, all the way to 2. So it's just a, it's just a straight line in the complex plane, all right? starting and ending at those two points. And I want to know the arc length of that. So, of course, we can do a standard formula for that, but let's use our arc length formula. Um, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to do that, but let's use the arc length formula to do a simple example. So, uh, z prime, then, is going to be 1 plus i a, okay? And, of course, z prime, the modulus of that will be 1 squared plus a squared, which will be equal to 1 plus, um, so a is equal to 2, so that will be 4 equal to 5. Okay, in which case we take the integral 0 to 1 of 5 dt, which is of course going to be equal to 5. Uh, oh, sorry, we need to take the square, uh, the square root of that. Sorry about that. It's going to be root 5. That'll be the length of the curve, and of course that would be exactly what we would get from a triangle uh, with a right triangle of uh, of of the two sides equal to 1 and 2, and then our hypotenuse would be equal to 
root 5. Okay, so we can see there's a simple example of how the arc length works. So in later uh, sections, we're going to start using uh, some of these ideas of arc length um, and contours to start doing integrations in the complex plane where we have uh, complex uh, functions involved as well. So thank you very much.